There's no such thing as a typical day for our troops. But in tonight's report, a sample of what one day was like in Iraq. Convoys, a common sight in both Iraq and Afghanistan. But there's nothing common about this kind of drive. Too often it's a commute to combat, even if the original mission was to distribute medical supplies. As such, every departure from base is preceded by a detailed briefing. At that intersection, in the last 48 hours, there's been a, a direct fire. Often lasting 30 minutes or more, everything is reviewed from the route to rules of engagement to tactics for every conceivable circumstance. It may seem redundant, but the NCOs know this kind of drill and repetition before every mission ultimately should result in the proper reaction should the worst happen. Our mission on this patrol is to visit an Iraqi police station, one which had been overrun and the police routed just weeks before. En route, a bright spot, a village where we're greeted by children and adults who seem genuinely delighted to see us. And the troops are glad to see them. Well, we like to come down here, take alternate routes once in a while to, to see the kids, see what the environment they live in, and see if there's anything we can do for them. The village elder talks to us about some strangers who've recently been in the area. While it's a risk to even be seen talking to Americans, it's one I've noted many Iraqis are willing to take. On a route called Coyote, an unscheduled stop to investigate a possible IED planted in a hole by the side of the road. Turns out to be debris from a previous IED. Once at the police station in the town of Taramia, the troops conduct a briefing with the local commander. Suddenly, there's a commotion in the headquarters courtyard. A wailing. The sound of a family's agony when a loved one has been lost. The police had found and brought in the body of an Iraqi man. His family had just learned his fate. Murdered by terrorists, militia, or a common criminal, I never found out we had to return to base. Back on Coyote, our column comes to a halt again. Remember that suspicious hole? Well, they'd spotted wires coming from it this time. They led off into the high brush. We believe that the trigger man is up along, along the uh, right side of the tree line in here. There's a new wire. They're going to do, I said, a sign said recon by fire. Recon by fire. In this case, that meant shooting in the direction that the wires led off into the deep brush. Suddenly, gunfire erupts. At first, it's rather disconcerting. By the time I get to the lead vehicle, there's plenty of brass on the ground, and the bad guys have gone. Meanwhile, a call had gone out to EOD, Explosives Ordnance Disposal, a military bomb squad with a collection of extraordinary vehicles that can withstand almost anything the enemy has in his armory. We all back away, even the monster A-1 tanks on the other side of the hole. And then... Thanks to EOD, one less IED. As always, I want to thank the folks at Central Command for allowing me to embed with them on these trips, particularly Air Force Command Chief Kurt Brownhill and Marine Corps Staff Sergeant J.J. Rodriguez. In tonight's report, we saw what happens when we find an IED. Next week, what happens when an IED finds us.